Okay. All right. So up until now, we've uh, looked at um, the foundations of a uh, of uh, building a foundation, a biblical foundation towards marriage. So the last couple of um, chapters that we've done uh, was just building that foundation, just laying, uh, you know, doing the spade work, laying all what was necessary for us to understand. Now we're going to be looking at specific elements of what really makes a good marriage. And uh, also, so the, the, uh, the next couple of um, uh, chapters are going to be a lot practical yet we're going to look back at the word to um, to understand these uh, practical ways of dealing in marriage um, with the with biblical principles so we're going to start our first element for a good uh, marriage is um, communication okay uh, so uh, I'd, I'd like to understand pro probably from from maybe some of you uh, what do you think communication enhances in a marriage? What, why is it important, and why should we strive to ensure that we work on communication? Because it doesn't come easy, and I'm sure we we've all been there. We we've, we've known that it doesn't come easy. So, why do you think it's important to focus on communication? A couple of remarks or uh, you know thoughts from y'all would be helpful. <clears throat> yes, yes, Anita, go ahead. Uh, Mom, when uh, we love anybody, that time we want to know them more. Like, uh, what is their preferences? What okay. is their likes, dislikes? Unless and until we know that, we cannot make that effort because we, as a person, we have different uh, likings. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like, uh, when we want to give, uh, we want to show love, we mm -hmm. give preference to their likings. That's how we can show that, yes, uh, like we are striving to become one. Okay. So communication helps in a greater understanding so that you can express and understand la, uh, the other. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Yes, uh, Samuel, I think you raised your hand too. Yeah. Um, so I think it, communication is to a certain extent almost everything that uh, helps in stabilizing a marriage. Uh, so one is, like Anita was saying, uh, preferences, likes, dislikes, but also... Uh, I think uh, resolving conflicts uh, and like a lot of what we're talking about you know if if uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm taking both aspects of communication which is speaking as well as listening and uh, unless there is not enough of speaking and listening happen then there's a, I think a lot of space or distance created between uh, the couple which mm. makes the marriage very vulnerable Right. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Yeah. So I think, uh, uh, um, you know, an important observation to make is that, um, you know, we're looking at, let's say, when two people come together, you're looking at uh, the kind of styles, communication styles that they've been used to in the early years of their lives, let's say 25, 26 years of their lives. They're used to a way of communication in their homes, the way things are spoken about, you know, do emotional experiences get talked about, are conflicts um, uh, resolved, are appreciations given, uh, you know, is there is there a chance for um, members of the family to express what they feel or what they are or uh, all of that. So you can see that the it's it's very different very dynamic in every setting and two people coming from different settings definitely brings about its own challenges so and learning that art of communication in itself takes time takes effort takes intention 
so uh, you know i don't know how many of us have been here that um, you know we've been uh, right from day one of our marriage we've been able to completely communicate well by being understood and also helping the other one understand us um we i mean a lot of us may have come through that journey of you know finding a way of of changing our styles of communication the way that we express and what we should be doing so this is definitely one area very important and very essential uh, uh, in in building that uh, that that strong marriage okay so uh, when we look at uh, you know levels of communication we probably uh, can see different levels of communication so uh, so the, the initial uh, the the understanding or the main aim when you are communicating to someone is that they understand you and you also feel understood Th those are the main aims of of communication but nevertheless there are different levels of it like the first one would probably be those casual ones you know you you casually communicate with people with many people in a day it could be um you know someone you just see on the street you're going for a walk and you see the person every day and and there's a quick hey hey how are you doing how is your morning or oh, good morning and that's it that conversation ends there it's it's extremely casual right or uh, maybe you are um you know you're getting into into a public transport you see somebody there something falls down you pick it up and say hey thank you thank you so much that's it that's all it's it's a very very casual communication the next level could be the professional one the professional communication is where there are a lot of ideas and facts and um uh data that is that is uh, communicated apart from beyond that there isn't any anything else it it's generally used in your office space it's used in a professional setting where you know that with with that information you make a decision or you work together as a team so that becomes a professional communication the third level of communication is friendship it goes up a notch higher where you are you're not just communicating facts or not just communicating um uh, uh, maybe events but it's uh, there are other things that are added to it there are emotions there are thoughts there are ideas that are being expressed um there are feelings that are being expressed so that that moves in uh, to to a uh, to the next level and usually this kind of communication is usually seen among among friendships among people who are good friends okay there is some sense of a uh, of freedom to really share uh, things that's going on in in life and and coming to a place of supporting and encouragement the the level that we are seeking for in marriage is the intimate level of communication and what do we seek here it's not just facts it's not just feelings but it's also a place of vulnerability and trust where you bear um, everything about yourself knowing that what where you have placed it is within a committed relationship in a relationship where you can trust that the other person will preserve um uh what what has been shared with them so this this kind of an intimate communication is where um you know you share of who you are what you feel what you think of what you hope for what you dream for, dream of what you're going through what's been uh, biggest challenges so that is the best place the intimate level of communication is the best place for a husband and wife to experience okay we often do see that uh, a lot of times um uh, you know many um, um, may maybe there are a lot of couples who are still at the professional level you know just being able to share facts and ideas in the sense of okay the children need to go to school the children need this uh, you know the house needs that the parents need this and and it remains at that okay so typically we see that that there's distance in the in the relationship because there is no sharing of ideas or feelings or thoughts it's not they don't find it is a safe place um to to communicate in that in that uh, area okay um we we need to uh, and and this like we said is something that is intentional these kind of um uh communication building an intimate level of communication comes only with intention and comes with practice and comes with time comes with those trials and trial and errors okay 
Now, it's, there are three specific factors that we look for when we are talking about uh, a healthy communication or an intimate uh, level of communication. Three specific factors, which is time, which is trust, and transparency. So, as you know, even as Avni brought up the question in the last class about um, about uh, uh, attention, uh, attention is equivalent to time. So, setting aside specific parts of your day in order to um, connect together. And this can happen over any point. It can happen over, you know, just a morning walk, or it can happen over a cup of tea, or it can happen over breakfast. But some place where there is um, set aside time to to talk, okay. And of course, it needs to be at at those times when both seem to have uh, the energy to have a meaningful conversation. So. Something that we really struggled with with our initial years of marriage was I'm a morning person and my husband's a night person. So, uh, and my husband gets quite chatty in the night. And uh, it would, it would, uh, uh, you know, he would be very offended because it would be lullaby to me. And I would often, often, often go back to go to sleep, not go back to sleep, but go to sleep. Uh, you know, just to wake up in in between, knowing that he stopped the conversation, and you know, you kind of say, "Yeah, I, I, I was listening." He said, "No, I know you weren't listening. You've gone off halfway asleep," and uh, this this became a challenge for us, you know. But uh, you know, through through um, through understanding, living together, we figured, okay, that this morning time, night times don't work for conversations. It was more of a challenge to keep set aside. Time. So this had to be done intentionally. Um, it needs to be structured. There needs to be a place where you can accommodate those changes. Okay. So um, ensuring that you know having that time, it can uh, it can it can be on a regular basis. It can be smaller periods and over extended periods. It can be you know longer points of time where you know it could be either weekends or uh, you know certain vacations. But taking that priority, giving uh, communication that time is essentially important. The next that we look at is trust. Now trust is something uh, that we not only give but also need to be earned. So what do we mean by trust in communication? Is that confidence and that assurance that whatever you share or whatever you bear out uh, is, is not just kept, preserved, confidential, but also not bought back, at a diff not thrown back at a difficult point of time of a conflict? You know, the assurance that you will not use some information against them at a time of a disagreement. So that's how you earn trust. You also give trust by, by not doing the same. You earn and give trust by ensuring that, uh, you know, especially when you're giving a word, as scripture says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So when you're giving a word, ensuring that it's backed up with an action. Because when it isn't, there is, there is a huge uh, vacuum that comes by and, uh, and there, there can be um, a refusal or, or, a, or a, not a refusal, a fear to trust. Okay, so just being able to um, uh, one to preserve to protect information that is being shared, to be to to have the confidence that whatever is being shared will be kept. The second is not throwing back vulnerable information that someone gives you um, uh, towards them. Like uh, I'll, I I can give you certain examples. Um, Let's say, you know, in, in an honest communication, maybe one of the spouses does say, uh, you know, there were periods of time that I, I truly found it hard to trust you or to love you, right? And at a later point of time, maybe when there is a conflict, this can be bought up, you know, by the other spouse. Anyway, you don't trust and you don't love me, so what's the point? Right, so that becomes like a breach, you know. That's uh, and uh, when the person has actually opened up that that place of being vulnerable 
to you. It is taken um, with the understanding that they desire to build that intimacy and as a result have shared that very personal or vulnerable information. And you preserve that by not throwing it back to them. So, so trust is a very important um, area within communication. The third, of course, is transparency. Transparency is being uh, is knowing that that you can share your uh, most deepest thoughts and um, uh, whatever it may be without uh, without feeling a sense of judgment or a sense of condemnation or a sense of scrutiny or criticism. So just saying that you know, just I'm, I know I can be transparent because I know it will not be seen as uh, as something that is that is uh, that shouldn't be shared so transparency definitely takes uh, it it's not it doesn't come all of a sudden it comes through practice it comes through mutual understanding that whatever is being shared is being preserved and 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 taken and accepted okay so that definitely takes time to build so three things time trust and transparency are specific elements for basic communication uh, quickly we're going to just look at what are uh, why why is communication important and i think some of you did mention uh, a, a few of these pointers but to to just look at um, what what does communication actually help to do one yes communication helps uh, to to know and understand each other uh, Christopher, sorry, you had a question, Christopher. Do you want to you want to bring that up? Yes, Christopher, go ahead. Uh, yes, I had a question on uh, transparency. Uh, so I think uh, my view is that you know it's it's easier for uh, you know women to be more uh, transparent, and um, you know men usually are you know you know withhold or uh, keep uh, things. Uh, closer you know to the to the chest uh, my question is more about you know in in a in a in a, in a long term relationship between you know uh, i mean in a marriage where um, the uh, transparency uh, you know may be um, may not always be completely i mean Total transparency, transparency may not be possible, and um, uh, I mean, I think you know if if you were to put on your uh, you know uh, counseling hat, you know, uh, uh, versus you know uh, you know the uh, the sort of the spiritual uh, you know spiritual hat, um, there is there is a view that you know total transparency or there uh, or or there is a view that. Uh, you know, there are some things that perhaps it's better not to uh, discuss, you know, things maybe in the past, things that, you know, that could come in the way of, uh, of uh, you know, you know, the understanding that, that, that a spouse may, uh, I mean, the, the, the inaccessibility uh, of, you know, uh, understanding, you know, what has happened in the past. So just not even bring that up. So I just wanted to get your view on that. Uh, Okay, um, so I I want to bring it with a context of um, uh, um, okay. So I'm I'm just going to speak of this in context of let's say a premarital uh, a couple who is yet to be married, right? Um, so something that that I personally recommend is that you know in your initial years or months of courtship to be transparent about um, things of your past the reason being now uh, so so there, there have been a lot of uh, you know questions i have received on that but i i feel i mean now this again it, it's through a practical aspect of uh, let's say sharing some things of the past with the person you are to marry um, definitely puts you at a place of freedom because let's say way into marriage through some form through some means 
the past has been brought up or has been revealed or concealed or brought up or you know found out um, there can tend to be a breach of trust there so to avoid that i personally think you walk into marriage with a clean slate of having shared whatever important necessary um, information without really getting into too many details um, of you know of a specific incident of whatever is needs to be known when it is shared there is a lot more freedom in knowing that you have uh, been true and right in your um, expressions of what has been in your past so that's what I personally believe in and that's something that I have seen that in especially in premarital work when we do that and there are couples who actually bring about certain issues of their past some of them have taken it well some of them have not taken it well but it has helped them to it, that has given uh, helped them to decide on whether they would like to pursue that relationship okay and i think it's fair uh, it's a sense of respect that you you're allowing the person to make that choice knowing whatever has been um, you know those those skeletons of your past so you're giving them the choice uh, to, to make that decision so uh, that's what I would say in a premarital um, uh, let's say work or, or a progress as we as, as we're working through a premarital couple now for a married couple um, I, I would I would specifically again say you know there are there there may, Things in out in the open definitely can be painful, and can can be uh, bought uh, can be taken in a way that's uh, that's that's probably um, you know very hard, or there can be serious hardships. In fact, I am dealing with a couple right now, who's uh, of course they're not a, they're not a believing family, but uh, the husband. Um, you know, had an extramarital affair 10 years back and he has been carrying the guilt and the burden of it um, for 10 years and he felt it was time to confess to the wife. He did so and everything broke loose. I mean, things have really, really gone very sour she has been traumatized has been taken it's been taken really badly and to rebuild it definitely takes that time takes that um you know it, it's it's a lot of pain it's a lot of hardships yet when it when you when you look at the man in question over here that's something i believe he was convicted to do right and uh, as a as a result having done so he he feels that you know he's done his part of feeling free however it has brought about a, a serious range of repercussions for him yet he feels that that was one of the best things that he did because it's begun to rechange to rework to revamp the relationship now so what has been missing over the last 10 years has come out in the open um, i mean you know some of us may ask why did he even go there but i believe that was a conviction that he had so in situations and and i think this we may not be able to generalize uh in in every in every way um you know it, it really depends on how the spouse may take such uh, uh you know such confessions it may depend on how um you know it uh, reconciliation could happen but if if that's something that uh, you know as a believer as a believer if you feel that is that you you're convicted to seek the forgiveness of one um, maybe without needing to give too many details but being able to to settle that i think that's something that um uh, that that you should be able to do right um so again there is no general rule I think it depends a lot on the people involved, the kind of relationship that the that the that the partners did share in the marriage. All of that really, uh, you know, may decide the outcome of how things may go in future. So those are my thoughts, Christopher. 
would you have a follow up question or would anyone like to pitch in anything so i uh, no i understand the uh, you know the scenario you had mentioned about you know uh, an extramarital affair um i i i'm uh, i'm talking about also about uh, you know um, the past that is before marriage and after marriage mm-hmm. and you know areas where uh, the, uh, you know we we kind of you know look at it from a point of view as a couple that you know the past is the past what you know what 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 has been, what uh, what um, each one has has mm-hmm. done or uh, you know not done for example um is is the past and some uh, some can be shared some can be you know just uh, you know uh, kept uh, uh, you know uh, not i mean not not shared because the, the the individual feels that you know um, it's it's it it will not help uh, you know to you know moving forward uh, it will be more of a you know uh, just a, you know it will be a sore or a, you know a wound which will just may, which may not heal so mm. just taking that uh, you know taking that as a sort of a example like sorry, i mean maybe you can just uh, provide some your view yes that. So if if there is a view that it it doesn't uh, by by giving the information it doesn't help the marriage in any way if if it isn't going to um, then you know it's important that you settle it with the Lord or you know get any form of help that you may need uh, personal pastoral counseling help that you may need to settle that. But if you feel it will not work or help within the marriage, but uh, you know, or, or probably cause a lot more of strife, then maybe a wiser choice to um, to not bring it up at all. Yeah, I I I'd be with you in that, Christopher. Okay, thank you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're going to we're we're moving on to to just see what what exactly does communication do and why is it important for a strong marriage is one like like Anita specifically brought about one of the benefits is that you um, know and understand each other and that can happen only if you communicate it it happens only if you ask those questions you know what would you like um, what are you thinking what are you feeling how do you think about such and such a situation what do you think about this concept what do you think about this principle so that happens only when you communicate and it is by asking questions so one of the things that um, you know uh, I, I think i do find you know we find in in our own marriages is that we think that it's you know information should be forthcoming but i would challenge each one of you is you know write down some questions and ask you know what is your favorite color or what you know if you were to go for a holiday where would you like to go why would you do it or um, you know if uh, you ask just it, it's actually fun to bring up you know certain questions and 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 just ask because you get to have a feel about what the other person is and what they're thinking okay what are your aspirations if you were um, you know if you weren't uh, whatever an IT professional what would you have been instead what do you think you could have been instead uh, you know what is it that you speak to God in your in your um, uh, most difficult moments uh, you know so so just ask asking really helps to understand okay communication also one of the benefits is is that when you communicate and understand each other you are able to work together as a team you're able to do things together as a team um, like you know simple things like what meal are you going to make I, I mean th- these are just very very simple examples right but but let's say maybe it's it's the children something to do with the children or it's some ideas that you have for the children or for a holiday so you you talk together discuss that and you work together as a team to ensure that you get that done okay communication also helps to strengthen and support and encourage each other so there are like like it's written in ecclesiastes you know when one falls the other helps to pick pick the other up 
So communication is just encouraging, supporting. Hey, I'm with you. Uh, I'm there to pray for you. Uh, I'm there to support you. Uh, you know, I'm sure you can do this. Um, I know this must be tough on you, but then I'm praying for you. I'm backing you up. And the more that you verbalize it, the more that you articulate it, it helps to build that encouragement and support. The next thing that it does is it helps to resolve those conflicts. Um, there are going to be differences in ideas um, or differences in the way that you decide, but uh, conflicts can be resolved only through communication by actually working out what are some of those differences and finding answers to this, brainstorming together, uh, coming together to evaluate what went wrong, what are meaningful ways that uh, uh, situations can be dealt with. And all of this happens only when you resolve, uh, resolve conflicts through, the, uh, through communication being a medium. The next is, yes, growing spiritually together, sharing your journey spiritually, sharing about your faith, what you have learned, how the Lord speaks to you, uh, what you, um, you know, what has, um, uh, what kind of um, um, knowledge you're attaining, where you are spiritually, maybe in a dry part, uh, dry part of your spiritual journey. So there can be encouragement, or there can be prayer or support that comes in. Maybe you just speak a verse over them. So, so that helps the two of you to grow together spiritually. It also helps to protect your marriage. Communication is one way in ensuring that there is unity and there is closeness and that the focus is on other. Um, you know, often what happens within uh, how, how it, how generally marriages drift away is because there is a concealing of emotions or there is a concealing of what you are going through. But the more that you share your experiences or your thoughts about yourself, about each other, about what you're seeing around, you've, you've got someone who, uh, you know, someone like a, a support that, that you are, someone who's like a I'm trying to get the right word, a sounding board, a sounding board for whatever you're going through. So it helps to guard the marriage. It also helps to bring up children, to nurture the children. Um, when, when parents do come together, parents do work together as when they communicate, it definitely impacts their parenting impacts what is being taught to the children, how they are to be disciplined, how they are to be loved, how they are to be uh, cherished and nurtured. So communication, a good, good part of communication is about helping the children and bringing them up as well. And lastly, of course, communication helps in bringing memories and keeping, um, um, you know, going back in time to reflect about things that you've enjoyed together, uh, going back to those moments, reliving those moments that uh, that have, uh, you know, that that were good times or things that you'll know, work together or even situations that have been difficult. Uh, just expressing how you know, looking back as to how um, things have worked out. So, so this is this is what communication specifically does, and and that's how the benefit of it comes by. Okay. Uh, any questions here before we just move into some uh, facts, elements of communication? We're just going to be looking at one of them today, and we will take on uh, the other next week. Any questions before we move on? You'll have been awfully quiet today. We're supposed to be communicating. <laughs> Can I share some thoughts, Pastor? Yes, 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 sure. Go ahead, sir. From what I have experienced is one is it's it's quite calm complex in the whole um, the whole um, uh, area of communication I, I feel it's complex because um, you know of, of I mean I think it's 
it's it's a combination of so many factors you know, the way we brought up our own personality like some of us are very direct uh, some of us beat around the bush <laughs> some of us um, take a long time to actually articulate uh, and some of us just expect you know, for some of us you know there's always a chatter Uh, in our minds that needs to come out and some of us there's just silence so i, I don't know if there is like one i mean i i understand and and i totally agree with the more uh, we communicate the stronger relationships become especially in the case of a husband and wife uh, it it's it becomes a foundation and the communication helps uh, to build a strong foundation on which the marriage stands um but again i think i don't know uh, could it be like i <laughs> don't know what christopher was saying earlier like men are better at holding things close to chest or something like along the lines i mean i i do feel like women the way women resolve conflict i, I don't know if there is gender bias but yeah most women i think um, like to resolve conflicts by talking it out sharing it with everyone friends whereas men they like to uh, internalize it churn it inside uh, keep percolating it and then you know somehow come to a conclusion the talking it out is probably some for some of us a personal preference like the last thing that we want to do we just want to you know just like i think the pressure of you know we need to communicate that that pressure of like when when at least one person is not able like it, it it's not one of the strong suits like for me to communicate and you know for me not to communicate and internalize is a more preferred or a natural option but then uh you know there is a need like everyone like the wife is saying like you don't tell me things you know you need to communicate or or you know you go to a counselor or most people suggest you need to communicate and i don't know if there is a harm in that like the textual pressure pressure of um having to communicate and I, i i didn't mean to pose it as a question i was just sharing random thoughts but it came out as a question <laughs> yeah okay. you're right you're uh, you i think you you hit that saying yes it is very complex um it's not as easy as you know we say listen express speak and it will be fine no um however i think in whatever um, whatever way whatever limited way uh, that we can we ensure that we do it even if it is complex even if it is hard we still make attempts to do it so it it can it can cause uh, issues but some communication is better than no communication at all so the more that you do it the more that understanding comes about and this is something that doesn't get attained by you know i think you can continue learning to communicate for years and years and years and i mean i have parents who who's 80 83 and 80 okay they're still learning to communicate and there are times they feel offended at the way one communicates with the other but uh and uh, but but i'd say all all because we come to you know a knotted place or or a standstill we shouldn't stop there we keep learning we keep growing in those areas of communication uh the more that i think uh, now now going back to what christopher said about you know women probably being a lot more verbose more um articulate in the way that they share and men be tending to hold back um and uh, you know and keep away now this works like you know like a lock and key and the more that a couple is able to understand that um you know the more that i nag as a wife the more that he's going to shut down okay but the more that i give him that free space maybe the more that he will open up 
or understanding the more that he opens up you know i encourage and give him the space to talk appreciate that he's brought up those things uh you know respect what he's brought so i think it works like a lock and key every time you turn a, turn the key you know the lock opens and every time you lock it you have someone else helping you open open it so it works it's it's a circular communication i'd say is very circular in itself that you have to provide a space to to allow the other person to be um you know wrong in the way that they communicate till they probably get right to it so uh i mean i think that's how i see it yes it is complex but nevertheless keep doing it is i i think is the uh, is the is the answer that i that i may have okay all right thank we'll, you thank you yeah okay so we'll we'll quickly go on to the uh to the to uh, one of the in communication the uh, a really important part of communication of course is listening okay be attentive in your listening and uh, you know you have scripture that talks of uh there's another question was that a question or did somebody christopher yes yes christopher go ahead no actually i was just going to mention about uh, non verbal communication and mm -hmm. um, you know as I, as i was uh, as i was thinking about it uh, you mentioned about listening and i think uh, that is uh, definitely a, a, you know a form of non verbal communication Mm. and um that you know so that's why i put up my hand and i was actually going to take it but take it back um the reason is that um uh, obviously listening is a non verbal communication is is a form of non verbal uh, communication um and it's all, there's also you know just being able to you know um you know be in a, in a in a in the right sort of you know uh, mode of you know uh, of uh, uh, listening or being attentive uh, you know to to your spouse uh, i think is 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 important and it's just to, you know uh, you know just makes uh, it uh, a much more easier way of being able to you know to uh, to uh, get get along with each other so for example uh, both could be non i mean the communication could be both non verbal in the sense that you know if uh, if uh, husband and wife are cooking and in a kitchen and they're not um, are cooking together in the kitchen and uh, they're not talking at all but still being able to you know you know be attentive to each other you know be uh, aware that uh, you know there may be something that uh, some way that uh, uh, one could help help the other uh, while they are while they are doing the doing the work uh, it's it is a form of non verbal communication and um, it it makes it, it definitely makes a difference and uh, i've seen that in in the case of uh, in, in my own personal experience yeah thank you thank you christopher yeah so um uh, listening yes it it expresses that you are there that uh, you know you are paying attention you are present you're expressing and i think there are very many ways that you express that you know even through your body language and that's what non verbal communication is when you're actually paying attention to someone it's um you know looking at them engaging uh, an eye contact it's probably leaning forward uh, it's showing your interest rather than you know sitting back with your hands up and with your legs up it it does express some form of a your your non verbal uh, posture definitely express that you are attentive you know keeping aside any form of a distraction uh, or any work that you're doing leaving it aside and paying attention definitely uh, shows that you are there you are interested and you would like to engage in that meaningful conversation so um uh, i think scripture also mentions uh, you know brings about that principle of being uh, being quick to listen but slow to speak right so uh, you know that you have that cliched uh, 
thing that says you have that's why you have two ears and one mouth no so more to listen and less to say so uh, just being there to pay attention and and to listen so what would this active listening be like active listening is um, I think in our conversation maybe certain principles that we can pick up is you know when we're communicating with each other what we often tend to do is when someone is speaking, we are looking for answers to respond. We want to ensure that we are going to say something before we can actually openly absorb and listen. So we lose patience half the way and we tend to either interrupt or we tend to pick on, we have something called a selective listening. We pick on something in that entire 15 sentences of one word that's been said, pick on that and, and get on to that. But not look at it as a whole, uh, look at it as something that's come as a, come in as a package. Okay, so uh, active listening is one where you can, you know, it would be nice if you could just shut off the, the thinking part of us to, to respond and just be in a place of just listening, just uh, uh, just bearing our hearts out to them, so that they can that we can listen. Why is this important? Is you know, uh, and I'm sure for those of you who've really had a chance to open up with somebody and share, and who's really listened, you begin to see that the more that you're able to express and talk without any form of a judgment or inter uh, interruption from the other other person, you begin to feel so much lighter about your challenge or your issue. And you also begin to find ways of dealing with your issue without the person having to having said anything. Right? So just uh, being able to listen uh, goes a long way in helping the other person sort out the chaos that is going on in their heads. So husbands, when your wives come to you and talk to you, um, you know, uh, he talked, John Gray talks about putting on the, the fix, the Mr. Fix-It, right? The Mr. Fix-It is whenever she comes to you and tells you something, you're looking through your dictionary, your, your manual and saying, okay, how do I fix this? What, what should I do? You know, I must say this, I must say this, uh, tell her this is what she should do, this is what. The, the best advice that you can have is don't say anything just listen and in fact you know if you do give her an advice she will she'll get very upset with you she say you don't care you don't you don't even listen when you've actually been listening all the while and then you give her a solution she'll she'll be really upset at you right but the 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 the, the understanding is when you're listening you're only listening you're not um, you know formulating a response uh, on what you should be saying However, you need to be responsive. Something, okay, so what do we mean by being responsive? And, I'm, and I want to take it in two ways. Being responsive can, one, be showing your, you know, you're, you're actually showing that you're listening. That is maybe you nod your head or you, uh, you know, you are agreeing, you say, mm-hmm, or, uh, or, oh, really? You know, that, that is one way of being responsive. Another way of being responsive is actually providing a feedback. Um, so saying something like, you know, this is what I heard you say. You said uh, that uh, you said this, you, you're giving them the content. Okay, this is what you said, uh, you know, that, that my mom said this about you and they all came in together and, and you know, did this, whatever, whatever the situation. And I and I hear that you're feeling quite upset and angry at what my mom did. And is that right? Did I hear you right? So being responsive also means you have heard enough to paraphrase and give back and say, this is what I heard you saying. Is that right? That's what responsive means. Wherein you're actually, you haven't shut off, but you've taken the gist of what you've heard, put it in as best as two, three sentences and bring it back and say, this is what I heard you saying. Is that what you were trying to communicate to me? Right? Rather than finding an answer, formulating an answer so that you can 
you know you can give it your best shot or you can defend uh, all of that but listening means you get the content you pick up maybe a feeling in it and you feed give it as a feedback okay and that really helps in the other person to uh, you know either give you clarity that yes that's exactly what i was trying to say or say hey you've missed the mark totally that's not what i was trying to say i was trying to say this and that really helps in uh, in getting you all understand the process of of communication so listening means all of this uh, paying attention you know giving that undivided attention being open to listen without actually jumping in onto a conclusion or defending it or uh, trying to find a solution to it being patient to listen through the entire thing being responsive in the way that you physically express yourself maybe some kind of verbal encouragers that you give also being able to pick up a certain feeling and being able to give it as a feedback now these are all ways that that you can listen i mean we 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 are we're talking about a topic that we can speak hours for in 10 minutes but nevertheless uh, it's something that we all can learn to do and uh, in any one of our relationships to be at a place of being sensitive to being patient being open being willing to listen without coming up with our own judgment or our own conclusions okay uh, in on page um 75 there is uh, you know a small questionnaire on listening on how on different aspects of listening and how well you listen maybe you know you could just take that test yourself to really figure out how do you fare uh, as a listener and and if you're married probably talk to your uh, husband or your wife to find out what kind of a listener are you and how good uh, a listener are you all right so these are some aspects that we've covered today i think main takeaways uh, for today's um, lesson is one yes communication is complex is hard nevertheless um you know it's just like going to the gym is hard nevertheless you got to do it right it it hurts it you know the, the lesser you do it the more flabby your muscles are going to be so the lesser you communicate the less skilled you're going to be so continue doing it even if there are mistakes even if there are sprains and strains go about doing it uh pick up the skills of of how maybe just for today we've said about listening how can i can i listen and how can i be intentional in the way that i listen how can i put myself second or put myself apart and allow the other person to to really share all right okay i think we are good for today uh, anybody else has any one has a, a comment or a, um, you know question or anything a sharing anything that you would like to if not uh, we can close today's session yes anita go ahead uh ma'am i just uh, wanted to uh, complete my testimony actually i did not give glory to god that day uh, what happened is uh, that time uh, my it is uh, last uh, it is uh, before in 2019 till then my daughter she was suffering with wheezing and every month at almost twice she was getting admitted and in all of this we did not have a good marriage and it was the things were really haywire it was so much of stress and all of this my i was uh, going through heartache and so much of like uh, uh, you uh, that um, strong holds in the mind like <clears throat> then uh, but i was just praying and uh, crying to god and it happened that i went to mumbai in 2019 i went into one church service the pastor had uh, prophesied over me he said that all of your heartache and all pain is been taken away and i said uh, it's not it's there how is that the pastor is saying but over the period of time it it took almost uh, for three four month it's totally gone all that it, there was peace in my heart like uh, the his words would not trick me anymore like that and the second thing is that um, uh, my sister she had she had a dream 
where uh, she saw me crying to god for my marriage and <clears throat> then she saw that pastor was there he kissed my forehead and he uh, means uh, he said that you are going to have a blessed marriage all that happened and it was her dream she told me that dream and till then the things were not as so good like that but uh, from the time lockdown started my husband started working from home my daughter miraculously she came out of the two years of wheezing totally no wheezing at all and <clears throat> then uh, because my husband was working from home we started communicating and all that then i could see that whatever dream she had everything was fulfilled like and i wanted to give glory to god then whatever we are praying how much ever things look like uh, that they cannot happen the things are very impossible in marriage also but when we are communicating god is listening and he has his ways his time when at the like spur of time everything changes that's what i just wanted to testify thank you anita thank you so much thank you yeah i thank you for sharing that i'm sure it you know it encourages those of us who may be struggling to keep to keep in hope in the living hope that god has called us for that all things will work together for his good thank you thank you for sharing anita all right i think we'll close uh, could i can i have someone pray maybe i'll i'll um salome can we can would you like to please pray salome Yes, yes, yes. Agree. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for all that done, Father. Thank you for the teaching that you've given today, Father. God. I pray, Lord, help us, Lord Jesus, that we could take forward this teaching, Father. That we could learn more, Father, and get deeper, closer to you, Father. God. And tell Him your word, ask for me and my house, Lord Jesus, Lord God. God, I pray, Father, that we as a family, we as family, together, come together and worship you, Father. Thank you for all that. Thank you, God. That you bless Gina, Father. That she's been teaching us so well. That you bless her abundantly. Thank you for all that. That is just my only prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Salome. Thank you all. Have a blessed week ahead. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, bye, ma'am. Bye bye.